Forbes Media has just put out its annual ranking of the world's 100 most powerful women. They come from the top ranks of politics, business, media, and entertainment. And here to tell us about who made the list this year and why Erica is not on the list is Mara <laughs> Forbes, <laughs> president yet, yet. and publisher of Forbes Women. Mara, right, good to see you here this morning. Good to see you. Uh, you've got 100 of the most powerful women all featured in the magazine. I guess the first question, what, what exactly is the criteria? Because there's a lot of people that weren't on the list as well. Well, there's a lot of amazing women, so it's certainly a daunting task. Yeah. We looked at women in a number of different categories, politics, business, media, lifestyle, and philanthropy. And we looked at things like hard power, such as how much money do they earn or they control? And important to times like this, soft power. How many individuals follow them on Twitter, on Facebook, things like social media, what influence they have in pop culture. Lady Gaga is the perfect example of that with tens of millions of people following her. New to this year, we also looked at power bases. How many power bases and spheres of influence do these women have above and beyond their daily jobs? Well, so much, so much influence, but, but the daily job of the person who's number one on this, obviously, that's really what, what took up a lot of her criteria, Angela Merkel of Germany. And she was back in number one. Michelle Obama bumped her last year. What brought her back? She's been number one five of six years. What brought her back is the fact that the EU is in huge turmoil. She's one of the most influential leaders in the world today, trying to serve as the life raft for Europe and the EU zone. Her decisions in terms of financial policy and economics not only affect Europe, but they affect the U.S., and we've seen that in the market over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, let's also talk about the woman who's on the cover, uh, Christine Lagarde, who, of course, is the managing director now of the International Monetary Fund. Um, she's on the list at, uh, I guess, what, number nine? Number right? nine. Okay, and there was even, you even had a cover story, a Forbes cover story about her. Uh, you know, what is it about... Uh, of all these women that are just in control of so much of the financial markets out there. This is the first time that Lagarde actually made it into the top 10, but what's more interesting is that she's been on the list every single year that we put it out. And she exemplifies a true power woman in the fact that this is the fourth different role she's had that's landed her on a power women's list. She's coming into a daunting role as head of the IMF, but given her experience in both the public and the private sector, she has a unique opportunity to change the reputation yeah. of the IMF. It looks very authoritative on the cover. Yes, she, she does. does. That woman she does. means business. When it comes to the makeup of the list and where women come from in terms of sectors, 10% of the women on this list represent the world of finance, which is very important in and of itself. It's actually even more than 10% when you look at not just companies, but also their role in governments mm -hmm. and governmental agencies. It's really interesting and surprising for a lot of people because the financial industry is one that's so typically associated with men. And in the economic crisis, a lot have been, has been said about what would have happened if women were in charge, whether it be in U.S. banks like Sally Krawcheck and Mary Erdos, but also in countries like Middle East, the Middle East, markets like the Middle East, and even in India, where women don't necessarily get associated with high ranks of power. Yeah, it was it was brought up too, actually, in the government with all this budget, all the budget issues that we went through over yeah. the last few months. You know, we actually talked about a number of times with the show. Would it have been different if more women were involved in those negotiations? More civilized talks. Well, I, I, I think <laughs> the, the power yeah. of uh, the power of negotiation, yeah. and with all the women on the list, we yeah. will we will see whether that transpires. And another interesting note: ninety percent of the women on the list are moms. Yes. So there you go. There we mm -hmm. go. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to have you so with us. much.